Yo, what's going on YouTube, man? It's Trey TV. I'm back with another video, man. So check this out. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say it loud and proud, man. You know, um, Crawford, you need to not ever, ever mention Canelo Saul Alvarez, man. Ever. That don't need to come out your mouth no more. I don't need to hear Canelo Saul Alvarez come out your mouth no more, homie. And this is my reason for that. You know, um, I got to give my credit to where it's due. Shout out to you for what you have accomplished in the sport. Four division world champ, two times undisputed. But I got to call a spade a spade, homie. That performance that you did with Madrivoff, anybody in the 154-pound division could have done the same thing you did because you didn't do anything spectacular, anything. The only thing you was able to to at, at, at least say that you got the better of was that you were the faster man, which, once again, you're coming up two, uh, two or three different weight classes. You're supposed to be the faster man. You're supposed to be lighter on your feet. You're supposed to react faster. You're, you know, for someone who's supposed to have been the pound-for-pound pound king, you had a lot of trouble with a guy that had 11 fights. You had a lot of trouble with Israel Madrival, homie. 11 fights, man. And you think you ready for Canelo? That done fought the best of the best at much weight, at much higher weight class than you? Canelo done fought brawlers? Stopped them. He done fought boxers? Stopped them. He done fought counter punchers? Stopped them. I mean... Anything that you think you're going to bring to the table that Canelo hasn't seen, it's not going to matter because he will stop you. And then just to put the icing on the cake, just to put the cherry on the cake, just to put the pound cake on the cake, your power is not there at 54, homie. Your power ain't even there at 54, man. What you think you're going to do at 168? You want to sit around and say Jamel Charlo ran. It was a reason why he ran. I mean, the way I see in that fight, he got caught with a right hand and said, oh, my gosh, this guy's too powerful. Let me survive. And it's going to be the same thing with you. It's going to be the exact same thing. You're going to go in there. You're going to think you're going to be able to do something. And then Canelo going to walk in with his high guard at his most prominent stance and crack you. And you're going to be like, oh, snap. Canelo going to look at you and say, yeah, and get your behind the survival mode. And that's what it's going to be. I mean, you didn't crack Israel Madrivov not one time. And you hit him a lot of times clean. A lot of times clean. He stood there, dusted that shot off, and kept going forward. That's how ineffective your punches were. Because if they were then he would have been backing up. You would have been getting out more shots, more combinations. And then you got the nerve to say, oh, man, I was through all because of his patience. What you think a guy like Canelo going to do? He going to patiently stalk you and break you down, boy. That's what you ain't understanding. You know, a lot of people want to criticize Canelo for going up and fighting Bivol. I mean, this is my thing. When you trace greatness, that's what happens. But it's going to be a total different thing, total different thing when you fight Canelo. When he fought Bivol, Bivol is not known to be a power puncher. Canelo had his own. Regardless of what y'all say, regardless of what y'all seen, regardless of the outcome, Canelo held his own. He got a granite chin, never been down, never been, never been knocked out, never been spaghetti noodle legs like you have when you fought a 35-pounder Gamboa. Um... <clears throat> I mean, that speaks volume within itself, homie. So you're looking at Canelo, which is a power puncher, pressure fighter, and you barely scratching the surface, barely doing anything at 54. Power-wise, what you think you're going to do at 168, 160? Them guys will swallow you whole. You need to keep your little skinny legs, 
Keep your skinny leg, your skinny arms at 47, homie. You know, after seeing what I've seen, you have no hope. You have zero chance of beating Canelo Alvarez. Zero chance. There's nothing you can do. He may not be active. Let me tell y'all something. The way I look at that fight, Israel, Majivov, and Canelo has some similarities. For one, the patience. For two, the footwork. For three, the angles. And then another thing they got in common is that both of those guys are not active. But the difference between Madrivov and Canelo is when Canelo hits you, he breaks bones. He cracks you. I'm not saying Madrivov can't do that, but apparently his power doesn't uh, equivalent to Crawford. You know what I mean? Because you got to think about it, man. You know, those shots, those right hands that Terrence Crawford the so-called pound-for-pound pound defensively responsible guy in the world was getting hit with, those overhand rights he was getting touched with, slapped with. Just imagine Canelo. He ain't going to do all that moving around, boy. That's what I'm trying to tell you. If you think you're going to step up to Canelo, you know, two, three pounds, uh, two or three red classes above, this guy walks around at 175, 185 probably, almost 200. He fights at 168 through 175, homie. What you think you're gonna do to a guy like that? And you couldn't even you you couldn't even hurt Madrival, man. What you think you're gonna do, man? Canelo, I'm I'm telling what Canelo gonna do once again. He's gonna walk you down in his most prominent stance in that high guard. He's gonna crack you with an overhand right or overhand left, whichever way he wanna crack you with. And then you're going to look at him and say, oh, snap. And Canelo going to look at you and say, yeah, and get your behind the survival mode, homie. And and, and, and it's going to pretty much go like that. And I feel like, honestly, he'll stop you. He didn't stop Jamal because Jamal was a bigger fighter than you, naturally. You know what I'm saying? Charlo probably walked around about 175, and he had to get down to 154. Um to fight at 154, different things like that. You feel me? But when you look at you, coming from 30, getting cracked by Gamboy, getting cracked by Kell Brook, getting cracked by Green Machine, getting cracked by Spin. I mean, you get cracked by everybody. But there's a difference, homie. It's the biggest difference you need to realize. When Canelo cracks you, you're never the same. I'm going to say it again. When Canelo cracks you, you're never the same, homie. So, Crawford, if you tune in to my channel, man, stay away from Canelo. Stay away from him, please. You know, you already knocking on 40 years old, bro. You already knocking on 40. You need to just leave Canelo alone, please. I don't want to see you get hurt no more than... Well, Madrivov, I already hurt you. Um, he cracked you all night. Your eye pretty much was swelled up. Couldn't even open your eye pretty much. Um, and you pretty much did exactly what I knew you was going to do, which was nothing. In effect, the pressure. But like I said before, man, if y'all ain't not already subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button, man. We taking out. And also, let me know what y'all think in the comments, man. This is a serious topic. This trade TV and we out.